genuinely laid in America doesn't even come close to this colossal waste of time and pile of toilet. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Did you know the term movie is actually short for moving pictures, which when you think about it, makes it sound really shit. This movie isn't moving. I'm gonna call it a, st a stilly. This is a stilly. Well, they're actually called stills, aren't they? Today we time travel back to 2019 and, and you know, that's not that long ago and I, I can't think of a single thing that's happened in between now and then. This film, Airplane Mode, was sadly released. Oh, no, no! Now, the cast of this film is like if you had a Royal Rumble of Vine stars. Think of Expendables, but instead of Dolph Lundgren, you've got Lele Pond. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> she did the thing before she fell over. I like that. That is good. Good. Now I must preface this film with the fact that Jake Paul and Logan Paul are both credited with writing this film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just said that. So please bear in mind that going forward, everything that you see on the screen has potentially come from the mind of the two creative geniuses that brought us other things such as Insane Spin Wheel Game. Can you eat that? Game. And my personal favourite, So Sorry. Game. Now a quick disclaimer, this once again is not a hate piece on anyone or either of them. It's just a fun movie review and critique. I've actually heard both of them are pretty nice guys in real life. So let's get into it. The film opens up with Logan Paul on the call of his girlfriend who's in Australia, who has the worst Australian accent I have ever heard. I'm ready to take this to the next level. Please stop getting Americans to do other accents. It just doesn't work. You can't do it. I'm sorry. Everyone else can do an American one because everyone else watches American films and gets used to it. You simply cannot. What about your real brother, Jake? At this point, this accent is so bad, it almost feels racist to Australians. And I don't even think that's humanly possible. This poor actress is from Ohio. I'm standing right next to you. Fucking stingrays, mate. Fucking drop beers. See, like that. That was shit. Because I can't do it. And nor can you. I'm sorry. But it's so bad. You can see her mouth, like, painfully trying to do an impression. Oh, just, just find one Australian girl. Is it that difficult? She doesn't even have a big role in the film. Now, this fella is called Humpa. Lumpa dubbity doo dum bum 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 He's also some terribly cringe bloke from Vine. Humpa, I can't say it without going into Humpa, Humpa, dubbity doo. Joanpa interrupts Logan about to have a Tommy Tank on Microsoft Teams with his girlfriend, as does a series of about six random other Vine stars. Why has he invited all these friends round and now he's gone upstairs to have a, a hand shandy on a meagle? What's that about? There's a social media convention called Hashtagacon. Bro, it's the biggest social media convention ever. Yeah, man, Hashtagacon. Everyone's gonna be there. It's gonna be awesome. First off, we need to ban the word social media. It's strictly reserved for people who are over 40. No one under that says it. No one's like, oh, we've been doing all day. Just been on the social medias, mate. All right? I've just been, just been cracking about. Just on, the, just on the social fucking medias, mate. Fucking love social media, it's my favourite pastime. So they're all buzzing about going to Hashtagacon, especially Huanpa, sorry, sorry. Especially Huanpa, because he's just announced that he's a big, massive virgin. So this means you can have sex, finally. Aww. Ah! No more virginity! <laughs> Which I don't find too unbelievable. I think he might, he, he must have been method acting for this role, because you come across like a massive one. <laughs> A zing? Consider yourself zinged, mate. Alright? Here's, here's... Gonna, I can hand you a check right now. For about 1,000 zings, because you've just been zinged. Now this film is essentially an homage to the 1980 comedy film Airplane, which is actually a very, very good film, and I highly recommend that you go and watch it. And you could go and watch it if you download today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. And in just a few clicks, you can pretend you're from Turkey, and all of a sudden on Turkish Netflix, there's Airplane, the original and the actual funny one. Now that's just one example, but there's actually hundreds upon hundreds of, potentially even thousands of Geoblock content trapped inside Netflix. Oh, borders? 
Ew. Now it's not only just good for using it on Netflix, it's pretty good to use for when you're using public Wi-Fi, because public Wi-Fi is open season for hackers. Most of the time public Wi-Fi isn't encrypted, but connect through a VPN and your passwords, everything you're typing in, your browsing data, it's all safe because they think you're a Mallorca, but you're not. You're in Slough. Surfshark are also the only VPN to offer the use of one account on an unlimited amount of devices. You can install it on your, your fire stick. I didn't even know, you, I, apparently you can. So use my code Kieran to get 83% off plus an extra three months for free. There's a 30 day money back guarantee that Surfshark offer. There's no risk in just trying it out for yourself. Use my link in the description below. Let's get back to the shit version of Airplane. <laughs> Logan's scared of flying because he jumped out of a tree when he was little. That, uh, yeah, that, that doesn't check out, to be honest, but okay. For some reason why, they've added his coloured shadow, that's not how shadow works, onto the house over here when he falls, despite the sun clearly coming from this direction. It's not a big thing, but it bugged me. I'm a big VFX prick, right? And it just, you know what? It royally fucked me off. We return to present day Logan, who looks straight down the camera, and then King Back, King, King Back? Is it King, King Box? His surname's actually Bachelor. That's fucking cool. Fair play, mate. He calls Logan a bitch for his childhood trauma, which is mean. And then they just start jumping about. Stop jumping, we have termites! Shut the fuck up and jump with us! We're termites! Now these aren't just normal termites. These termites are making an adult film under the floorboards. It's so weird, and most importantly, not remotely funny. The problem with so many films like this is that all the humor is just like shoehorned in, and it's just sort of based on like, haha, advance is funny. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> sex, funny. <laughs> Falling over and gunge and mess, funny. <laughs> Throughout this entire film, the amount of times people do like a, like a sick joke or something coming out of their mouth or just like mess is like ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. This entire film is just painfully at its core immature and is based on the concept of random equals funny, which is like true when you're like 12. You're just like. Banana. Now obviously they fall through the floor after the worst jump cut of all time. <laughs> Look at these two frames. The camera has actually moved up a bit. This fella hasn't got the memo and you can see the floor is completely fine. So what's causing them to fall? The floor is currently still intact. Now I'm sure the budget wasn't massive and I understand those considerations, but just a little bit of work in After Effects could clean that up tenfold. Logan now learns that the convention is in Australia where his online girlfriend lives. So he agrees to go after about three sex jokes in succession and some physical comedy. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, man goes ouchie. Now Logan Paul in this film, across the board, is generally actually all right. The jokes aren't good, but his delivery and his timing and some of his physical stuff is actually, it's pretty sick. So the main problem is just sort of everything else. Now Vitaly is on the flight. A man this seriously dangerous, he's in a straitjacket and a muzzle, is allowed to just be transported on a civilian flight. Okay. Vitaly is being extradited for a rabid dingo daycare prank. Oh, it's comedy. Comedy's calling. Mm-hmm. What? No one needs to make any jokes anymore because the best jokes ever have been said. And... Oh, oh okay. Uh, that was just... <sighs> that was comedy. And it's dead. Before they go in the airport, there's a random incestuous family for some... Is Okay, that's weird. Must be European. Must be nice. Must be down as fuck. But then, there's this guy. Hide your knives, hide your drugs, and hide your liquids because we searching everybody around here. <laughs> He did the meme. He did his thing. That's, I know that. I remember that because I've been on the internet. He did the meme. I do like when people do the meme. Had your kids, had your wife, and had your husband because they raping everybody out here. Sort of mad when you think about it. He got famous off the back of someone doing a remix about him doing an interview after his sister nearly got raped. Just let that sink in. Fucking weird that, innit? We're now at airport security and this guy, 
This guy is the dad in Laid in America. We have found a connection between two awful YouTuber films. Please sack your agent, mate, because it's just, it's going downhill. I'm not gonna lie. Juanpa reinforces some weird Mexican stereotypes by having to go through immigration in a big wooden barn with chickens. <laughs> Whoa! Benny? Oh my god, long time no see! Casey Neistat is here, which makes me sad because I absolutely love Casey Neistat. In this, he's a racist TSA agent and he makes a 911 joke. I have 911 reasons not to trust this guy. Just feels a bit mad considering he was at 9-11. Now, let's meet the pilots. Captain Thrustle with co-pilot Pinesse. His big funny thing is that he is a lisp. You know, I've been taking this new speech therapy class and I think my lisp is gone. I can barely notice it. Shockingly, I'm not a fan of this joke. Now the other pilot is called Penis. First of all, it's pronounced Penis. I come from a proud Celtic heritage. This is what we're working with here, people. This film is rated 18, but the humor is like for like a 14 year old. It's not remotely subtle. They've just called a character Penis, Mr. Penis. My name is Penis. What's next? Miss Volver, Mr. Balls and Shaft, Captain Fallopian Tube. Now hear me out here. Logan Paul can hear gay people's thoughts. Just gonna give you a little second to sort of comprehend what the fuck I've just said. That seat back is gonna be the only thing in the upright position. I can hear you. Which is mental and actually, sadly, integral to the plot of this film. Pilot Penis and this hate crime against people with speech impediments announced that you should put your phone on airplane mode, to which King Buck says, Hey, fuck that! I read the dad and turn my shit off. Everyone cheers and agrees, and Lele Pond says something completely unintelligible before doing some physical comedy. <laughs> and then they all start taking selfies, and this guy pills a potato because once again, random equals funny. I absolutely hate this cliche of young people go. They oh, they'll go insane. Don't make me turn my phone off. Oh my god, how will I cope? I'm young. I go on the internet so off. Done. What will I do? I couldn't possibly just watch a fucking film on the plane. The cockpit then starts to malfunction and smoke because people are on their phones and then they get electrocuted and die. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the science backs that up. Brittany Ferland then delivers the best line I've ever heard in the history of film. It is now safe to unfasten your seatbelts. Unfasten? You mean turn up? <laughs> yeah! There's then this huge panning shot of everyone getting turn up, which is funny because once again, it's random. It's so random. There's a llama. This girl has a bike helmet and silly string. Silly string? That is inherently quite silly. Technically, this shot is actually pretty cool. It's like the shot in 300 where everyone's dying and it's zooming in and out, except in this one, it's you who's dying. Inside. I watched this film twice for this, by the way. Two hours 40 in total. I want the darkness to overwhelm me and just take me now. Logan Paul's actual love interest in the film says she reckons she can make him laugh in two seconds. So, naturally, she throws a chocolate mousse at some bloke's head. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not funny. That's like the biggest dickhead move ever. It'd be funny if the guy deserved it, but he didn't. He was just sitting there, minding his own business. What? Uh, that's not funny, is it? God, if someone did that to me, I would, and now I don't like the word, but I would not hesitate to call them a cow. The air hostess finally realizes that these two are dead, so she asks the police marshal guarding Vitali for help. Her wings pin falls off in clear view of both of them, straight into Vitali's hands. So now he can free himself. Now the marshal conveniently has four pilots training, however, Vitali comes and does the biggest prank of all time, the ultimate prank, murder. We're then greeted by air traffic control in Australia. Boss, we had a bit of radio silence from flight 1524 from Los Angeles. Oi, well, you know what they say. Pilot penis. It's the same actor. They've used the same actor. It's not Austin Powers. You can't just, you can't do that. Also, with an equally terrible Australian accent. 
Benji here. Been trying to talk to you guys for ages. Just pay one extra person. I don't understand. Naturally, Juanpa takes a selfie with the dead pirates because young people like selfies. Before he goes on the hunt to try and lose his virginity before dying, I need to put my seed into a woman's vagina before I die. Logan just... You know, he tries to take care of, of keeping everyone alive. There's then two fart jokes in about six minutes. I'm sorry. That's fun. Now, Vitaly has a staff tied up in the luggage bay, and he wants to know where the emergency oxygen supply is, so he can tamper with it and poison all the people on the plane. So to threaten them into telling him where it is, he threatens to feed a dog cat food. Or I'll feed this dog cat food. Is that a joke? I don't understand. Is cat food notoriously worse than dog food? I'm not quite sure. I've seen my dog eat fox poo on about a hundred occasions. I've seen my dog chunder and then sniff the sick after just to see if there's anything good still in there. Anything worth worth coming back for a second harvest. Also, why does big evil Vitaly want to kill everyone in arguably a more humane way? I'd rather go out via noxious gas than in a horrific plane crash. Juanpa then explains that they're all going to die, so he explains to Brittany that they might as well do the deed as they're both virgins. Brittany Furlan then establishes that Juanpa is 17 years old. Aren't you like 16? 17. Oh, sorry, 17, my god. Which is illegal in America, and here, oddly, just sort of frowned upon. So naturally, she's convinced to be a nonce. Her last dying wish is to become a nonce. Vitaly then replaces the oxygen with chloroform. First off, why is it chloroform? Secondly, they've spelt chloroform wrong on the prop. Colour form. Now, remember Logan having the ability to hear gay people's thoughts from earlier? This is where it comes in handy. The flight attendant tells them via gay telekinesis that they shouldn't put the emergency oxygen on because it's poisoned. How do you know? I hear gay people. Logan and Vitaly then get in a fight and for people who aren't stunt actors, it's a pretty fun and well choreographed fight scene to be fair. I quite enjoyed the smashing of a little bottle as a weapon. I like that joke. That's a pretty good joke. But why is Vitaly doing this? Why does he want to murder everyone? Is he just scum? There is no social media convention. <laughs> With all of you dead, all of your followers will be fine. Imagine the power. The problem with that is that you can follow more than one influencer, creator person at once. It's not like a football team. I watch like 40 different people. It, uh, that's not a good motivation to try and kill a whole plane full of people. Vitaly then jumps out the plane and gets sucked into the engine along with the plane door. A monkey then slaps Logan, which is actually pretty cool to be honest. There's another bit of toilet humour. Mm, they're good at pooping. Logan then lands a the plane via watching a YouTube tutorial with some terrible jokes in it. Your sister said you're looking at anime porn again. She's lying! And this is how the plane stops. Cool. There's a rape joke in the news ticker followed by a dead meme, which reminds me earlier, there's just a reference to Chris Crocker. Leave Brittany alone! So, do with that what you will. And the green screen here is absolutely honking. But they're all safe now and they've landed. Now after this traumatic experience he's been through with this girl, Logan is now in love with this new girl. So he sends Juanpa to go shag his Australian girlfriend, who obliges pretty quickly just based on the fact that he has an accent. Which she does too, to be fair, but just a fucking shit one. Wait, you're not Logan? Now I can't show you this bit because it will get demonetized and age restricted like the previous video. But Juanpa is doing the deed and her dad walks in, who's black. Now, I wouldn't usually mention this, doesn't seem worth mentioning. But Juanpa's really shocked and he's like, your, your dad's black? And she's like, yeah. He's like, it's fine, I just didn't expect it. Your dad's black and it's just weird. It's just really weird. Oh my god, your dad is black. I mean, that's, that's cool. <laughs> Which reminds me, along with the weird Mexican immigrant part earlier, there's this random bit where a, a boy does the, the well-told joke of... How would you like it? Like I like my women. Black and full of cream. Logan then goes to see his new crush to announce his newfound love for her. But hang on. There's, there's a fella in the room. Oh no, it must be a boyfriend. Well, actually, no, it can't be a boyfriend because earlier in the film, she said she was going to Australia to get as far away from her ex as possible. Whoa, whoa, oh, yeah. No, yeah. I'm getting as far away from that shooting prick as possible, hence Australia. So it's not, it's a random bloke and we never know why he is there. But whilst he is there, they randomly add in some bongos. Oh, can, you, can you say that again? 
just some bongo noises whilst he's moving his chebs. There's been no silly cartoon non-diegetic noises this entire film and all of a sudden we get 10 minutes to the end and you're like, oh, you know what, fuck it. Put the bongos in, mate. Funny. Now sadly, Logan is about to leave disheartened. He was about to announce his newfound love for this girl. She was the one. But hang on. He can hear Bongo Bongo Man's thoughts. Oh my God. Which means Bongo Bongo Man is gay. Oh, all is good. All is good. I don't quite understand this superpower. Why can this one straight man hear every gay man's thoughts? How is Logan not also gay? I know that's so weird. That's so insane. I don't, that's this film is rubbish. I can't even, be, wait. Can, can people hear my thoughts? Oh my God, does that make me gay? Does that make everyone watching gay? They can, can, can you hear this? If, if you hear this, you are gay. Logan and the girl kiss and the film is as good as done. I actually genuinely think this is the worst film I've ever watched in my life. Genuinely, Lady in America doesn't even come close to this colossal waste of time and pile of toilet. It's rated 18 and the humour is so immature. They try to cram every single second constantly with terribly forced random jokes, which half of them barely aren't even jokes. Every single Vine star just does their thing. Curtis Laporte does his little arms and little legs thing. Lele Pons is falling all over the gaff. Logan does the splits. I'm hot, I'm sweaty, and it generally has been a really tough, harrowing experience for me. Now I have slated this film, however, I do appreciate that it's pretty sick to be able to be in a position where you can actually make a full scale film and you can write something on a bit of paper and get it onto the big screen. That is sick, so fair play for doing that. If you're making a film that's cool, good or bad, which this is not good, it's pretty cool that you got to a point where you can make a film itself. So I respect that. And also anyone having a cameo, if you get asked to be in a film, that's pretty sick. So I don't judge anyone for being in a shit film because it's still pretty cool to be in a film. But if you want to watch much better films than that, then check out Surfshark in the link in the description. It's really good. I generally do use it. I love it. Genuinely go watch the original airplane if you jump onto Turkey. It's so good and you'll finally understand what this film was trying to be. Please suggest any future films you want me to review in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Kieran. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!